as we celebrate the life of Bernita Sills. I'm honored to do that today and to be here with all of you. My name is Vicki Stanley. I'm the Minister of Pastoral Care here at Marion Methodist and knew Bernita quite well, had many count, uh, times that we visited. She and I spent time together, and it's a privilege to be here today. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to the faithful. For the Lord knows our frame and remembers that we are dust. The steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon the faithful and the righteousness of the Lord to children's children. Friends, we've gathered here this afternoon to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Bernita Sills. We come together in grief and acknowledge a very real and very human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find hope, we may find comfort, in sorrow we may find hope, and in death, resurrection. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course of faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially on this day, we praise you for Bernita, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them, and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home. Not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Two scriptures have been chosen for today, both of whom I think are very familiar. I know one is because we hear it often, and especially on days such as today. However, I'd like to think of the, the 23rd Psalm as not just a prayer that you hear at a funeral, but a, a psalm that speaks of our entire life and our entire walk with Jesus. He is our good shepherd who is there to guide us and lead us, not just through the valley of the shadow of death, but every day of our lives, and then is there to walk us home when that time comes as well. So hear these words from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And there's a continuing theme then with the, the words that we're going to hear from the Gospel of John because there's that preparation, there's that what's waiting for us when our days here on earth end. And these words come from John 14 where Jesus is talking to his disciples and helping them understand maybe a little bit better what's about to happen. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms if it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. 
May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. And we're going to turn our attention now to the folks who have gathered on the risers, a representation of our choir, who will be singing a beautiful medley of hymns for us.
Thank you all so much. Let's once again be in an attitude of prayer. Dear Lord, we have gathered here today as those who have known and loved your precious child, Bernita. We praise you for the wonderful ways in which she has touched so many lives with her smile and her love of people. You've been at her side throughout her life, and you were there to walk her home when she slipped from this life to the next. Thank you for the gift of her life and all that she has meant to those who have known and loved her. We ask for your comfort and love to surround them in the days ahead. Amen. Friends, in these next few moments that we're together, our main objective will be to celebrate the life of the one that you have known and loved and one who has held a very, very special place in your heart. Bernita meant something different to each of you. During her lifetime, she was in turn a mother, mother-in-law, aunt, neighbor, and friend. And she's been all of that and more for those who have known her best. But Bernita was always and still is a child of God who loves her and has known her more intimately than any of us ever could and more completely than we could. God knew Bernita before she was born and was with her when she left this life that we know for right now, when she, just a few short weeks ago. We can be comforted knowing that on this day and on that day, the end of this life meant that Bernita would now stand in the presence of the one who had created her, who loves her, and has been waiting for her return since the day she was born. We assuredly celebrate that fact today. We'll also be celebrating her faith in God, her Savior, the Holy One in whom she put her trust, and the one that she clung to in the difficult times of her life. And she had many of those, as we all do, and she had challenges that she had to face that God walked her through. And when you think about her 98 years, we know that all of those days were not great. But God walked her through those. He helped her. He comforted her. He gave her the strength to walk through all those days and everything in between until he called her home on October 6th. Now, Bernita's life, like many of, the, of her generation, was forged by the time period in which she was born, just like it is for all of us. But there's a uniqueness to that time frame that she grew up and entered adulthood and it was punctuated by major events like World War II, the Great Depression, the Korean conflict, and so much more. You know, we just think back to the last century and how many things happened, major things that forged who these people are, their personalities, the things that they did and how they did them. And all of these things impressed upon her generation a common background and oftentimes laid a foundation of hard work, determination, and resilience. They worked hard, they knew how to do that, they knew how to make do with things that we just couldn't do these days. We're so used to being able to just walk to the store, but yet they found other ways to do those things. Bernita's story is much like the many of the children and women who, of her time whose lives played out right here in the Midwest, right in Iowa, and right in Marion. There's so many common factors. And these people knew the value of hard work as they raised their families, worked in their churches and their communities, and lived out their adult years. Not unlike many of her peers from that same generation, Bernita learned many lessons, including being frugal with what you had and managing your assets, what you had, even if it wasn't much, but you managed it well. But Bernita's story was also uniquely hers. There is none others like, another other like hers because she was a special creation of God. There was one Bernita and one none other like her. There won't be another one like her because she was special, and so we celebrate her life today for the beauty and the love that it contained. As I share some of the things that I've known and learned recently about Bernita, it seems appropriate that these next few moments revolve around three things, home, family, and her love of serving in her community. 
As I said, Bernita's time played out among us right here in Marion, and, it, and a good share of it was spent in the home that she and Neil built back in 1951. She treasured her home. Any of you that know her know how important her home was to her. It was extremely important that she live out her days, and she pretty well accomplished that. And many of you and others who are not here today made that possible and made accommodations for her so that she could stay in her home and do so safely. Not only was her home important to her because they had built this home together and lived in it for so many years, but there were other family members that lived very close by on the same block, and so she had those memories of being able to look across backyards and see those familiar homes and the familiar rooms and places and people that she had grown up with and come into adulthood with. Many of her treasured memories were wrapped up in that block that's in the heart of Marion. Bernita and Neil raised their son Don in this home, creating even more wonderful memories, and it just cemented Bernita's love for her home on 4th Avenue. Being part of a relatively small family, those connections nonetheless were very strong and very important to Bernita. She welcomed her daughter, daughter-in-law Denise, Didi into the family, and treasured her as well. Didi shared with me that she knew Neil and Bernita were wonderful parents because they raised a wonderful son and wonderful who became a wonderful husband. And Bernita used to tell people that she had two children, one by birth and one by marriage. And there was so much love and respect between them all. And if you saw the pictures, you can see some of those things in those pictures. You can see the love and the joy on their faces. And Dee Dee feels that she has the best mother-in-law she could have ever asked for. Not always can people say that. <laughs> Bernita welcomed many people into her life, and no matter what the reason for that connection may have been, many of those connections became her friends. I can remember oftentimes visiting her in the hospital and the way she talked with the nurses or the therapists or other people that came into her room, you thought she'd known them forever. And it was just that short time that she'd been there that she got to know them and they got to know her. But she just was so kind and they were so welcome to her and made some strong connections. She had a smile for everyone and endeavored to be kind to anyone that she met over the years. She so appreciated the help she got from the visiting angel workers. I know there was a lot of those. Her church friends, some of you that are here today who helped her with repairs and odd jobs around her home, her homebound communion team who visited her regularly, and so many, many others that came into her life at various times and helped her be as independent as she possibly could and stay in her home. Along with the many people in her life whom she so enjoyed, Bernita loved to feed and watch the birds around her house. I asked if she liked flowers and gardening, and they said she liked to look at some of them, but she liked the birds. That was her thing, and that's what she really enjoyed doing. She loved cardinals. You see on the candle, there's a, a representation of a cardinal there. Those were her favorite, but she also loved chickadees and finches and so many, many more. And playing solitaire on her computer was a great time, pastime for her and a passion for her. Even though she really didn't know that much about computers, she could pay, play solitaire like a, a whiz there. So, She also loved to go uh, for long rides, both in Marion and around the countryside. And at one time, she and Neil owned a Thunderbird, which was her absolute favorite car, and unfortunately, the last car that they owned together. In 1976, she and Neil were in a horrific car accident, which led to a very long recovery periods for both of them and changed the trajectory of their lives dramatically. From that time forward, Bernita's days were never pain-free, and though she did her best, the pain was often more challenging and problematic than anyone realized. Her doctors at the time said Bernita had fought very hard to get back to health, and those who have known her best since that time have greatly admired her strength and her ability to continue a life, to live a life that was very rich and full. 
While recovering from this accident, Bernita made a vow to God that if she were able to recover from her injuries, she would spend the rest of her life doing good and helping others. And she made good on that vow once she was able and spent years in active volunteering for a number of organizations. A women's auxiliary, the food banks, the Marion Food Pantry in particular, and Helping Hands, and some of you are seated here today and would have worked with her alongside that endeavor. She also made lunches for Feeding Lunches to Youth, or the FLY program, worked for the Shriners and the Marion School District. So she had her hands in a lot of different things to do just what she said she would do. Dee Dee shared that when we met on Monday that she knew Bernita would most like to be remembered for her friends and her volunteer work. We could speak a lot longer. We just don't have the time today to do that. Um, I hope and I know, as you've all been visiting out beforehand today, that you were sharing some of those stories, sharing some of those things about Bernita that you especially love and treasure. And the conversations have probably been going on since October when she passed away and will continue for some time afterwards because that's how we show our love, how we show that those memories and those things are always in our hearts. But I also want to take a few moments today to speak of Bernita's dip, deep and rich faith in God and what that means for us and how we can use that example and ways in which see how it worked in her life, how it led her to live her life, believing in the promises and hope of something greater than herself, and gave purpose and meaning to her years with us. Bernita lived her faith as one who knows and trusts in God. And as believers, the hope that we have, the promise of eternal life with God our Father, is taught throughout the scriptures. That's our Roadmap. That's our book in which we see God's character, what he has done and continues to do in our lives, and how he guides us through that. The words that are in Scripture tell us that there is nothing that God doesn't know about us. He created each and every one of us to be uniquely who we are, and we are his beloved children. We are in his hands from the very moment that we're conceived, and we are in his loving care when our days here on life, in this life end. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was willing to give of everything he had and sacrifice himself for us, for each one of us. He took on our sins, our failures, and our shortcomings because his life, his love was so immense for us that he wanted us to be with him. And that love just wanted to envelop us and bring us closer to him. Beyond this life we know for now, we have hope. The promise of resurrection into a new life, which means life eternal with God our King, and that cannot be taken away. The words I shared earlier from the Gospel of John were spoken to his disciples on the last night that he was with them. And he was reassuring them that they would not be alone, and he would not desert them. These words are meant as reassurance for us as well and for hope that we have in our relationship with Jesus. And I'd like for you to hear them again. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Bernita trusted God and depended on him throughout her life. She was faced with many hard times and extreme challenges, and yet she held on to what she knew to be true, that Jesus is our Savior, and that his sacrifice means that we have the promise of something beyond the right now, the promise of eternal life. And just as Bernita herself is standing right this moment in the very presence of the living God, that promise is true for each and every one of us. There's no greater way that we could honor Bernita or to celebrate her life today than to come to know Jesus as she did and embrace that peace and joy that's ours if we only believe 
in the pathway to an eternal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. If you've not made that commitment, today is your day. Simply ask God's forgiveness for all those things that stand between you and him, and then believe in and proclaim that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. The days since Bernita's passing on October 6th have been different and may have seemed hard at times. For all of us who have known and loved Bernita and celebrated the wonderful moments in her life or stood by her in the hard times, and when tears come to your eyes as you remember Bernita and all that she's meant to you, there's still that opportunity to rejoice and take comfort in God's providential plans for her and for us to be with our Lord for all eternity. There's wonderful imagery in hospice materials that are shared with families when they're walking that walk and in that process. And the materials themselves are based on a poem that's called Gone From My Sight, which was written by a 19th century poet named Henry Van Dyke. This poem captures the essence of what we imagine happening when someone we love dies. The poem describes a ship sailing away from shore towards the horizon where it finally drops out of sight. But at that very moment when it can no longer be seen from the shore, there are other eyes watching her coming and other voices ready to take up the glad glad shout. Here she comes. Remember that when you leave this place, you will be leaving this behind, but others will be waiting for you, and Jesus will be waiting for you on the other side of that. So remember that when that ache is deep in your hearts, remember that Bernita is not gone, that she has been welcomed into the very presence of God, And with love and gratitude, we thank him for the life of Bernita Sills and for God's gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To all those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways we trust you, and to you, with your church on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory now and forever. O oh God, all that you've given us is yours, as first you gave Bernita Sills to us, now we give Bernita back to you. Receive Bernita into the arms of your mercy. Raise Bernita up with all your people. Receive us also and raise us into a new life. Help us so to love and serve you in this world that you, we may enter into your joy in the world to come. Amen. And we continue with a prayer of thanksgiving and say to our God, God of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us even to this particular day. For the gift of joy and days of health and strength and for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends and for our baptism and place in your church with all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus who knew our griefs, who died our death and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for each and every one of us. And as he taught us, so now we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please feel invited and welcome to stay for a while yet this afternoon, if you wish, to visit some more. Uh, there's the tables out there you can gather, or the couches, and, and spend some time if that's what you choose to do. But I leave you with these words as we close the service. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.